If you're an entrepreneur, you know what it means to take personal and financial risks, create jobs that support your community, and devote most of your time to your business. But do you know how to plan for a successful exit from your business? Do you know who should be involved in creating your succession or transition plan and the steps along the way? Welcome to Finish Big, the podcast with Mark Dorman from Legacy Business Advisors. The podcast theme is inspired by critically acclaimed business author, Bo Burlingham, author of Finish Big, how great entrepreneurs exit their companies on top. In this podcast, you'll hear success stories of exit plans done right and pick up practical tips based on years of legacy business advisors' expertise and knowledge about the largest and most important financial transaction of your life. Now, on to the show. Hello, and welcome to Finish Big, the podcast. I'm your host, Mark Dorman, and today I am joined by one of my really, really good friends in the business world, the fintech space, Mr. Adam Holt. Adam, good afternoon. Good afternoon to you, Mark. Good to Thank see you, you and hear your yep. voice. Thank you for joining us. So uh, by way of introduction, Adam is the CEO and founder of Asset Map. Asset Map is a platform uh, and one of the fastest growing uh, financial planning platforms in the marketplace today. And it's really been a game changer for many financial advisors. It helps to facilitate meaningful conversations with clients, particularly this in this episode, we're going to explore how it's helped business owners in particular. He's also the host of the Rethink podcast with Derek Notman. And for those financial advisors that might be listening in the audience, great podcast for you to really think differently about how you do business. Adam also serves as the president of the Drexel Executive MBA Advisory Board. Uh, he's also, when he's not busy with Asset Map, is an associate with Carbarth and Associates. Graduate of the Wharton School, Drexel University, and the American College. I could go on and on, but I met Adam personally about seven or eight years ago when he was really in the birthing stage of Asset Map and just been blown away. Our firm has successfully used Asset Map to communicate some of the most complex financial discussions and topics with business owners. And I would also say, and we'll explore this further, Adam, with their spouses. So Without further ado, Adam mm -hmm. Holt, welcome to Finish Big, the podcast. Thank you, my good friend. I appreciate yeah. all those accolades. Sometimes yeah. I forget how busy I am. <laughs> uh, I don't I hear it that way. Exactly. So uh, let's start with an introduction. First of all, uh, you started out as a financial advisor, mm -hmm. but really this show is about business owners. But just give us your background. You are a business owner today and a large one and a very successful one. But give us your background as an advisor, how you got started, and really what the birth of Asset Map was all about. Yeah, sure. You know, it's funny how we get into the business that we're in these days. I, I tend to believe we're all entrepreneurs, Mark. Uh, you know that pretty well. You either decide to run your organization like a scalable business. That means it has likely an exit, too, by the way. I think that's the real big difference when you think about creating something. You could be creating something for a lifestyle business, as you know, or as potentially something that's uh, exitable, but the ownership is the real key. Do you own the path? Uh, do you really feel empowered and excited about making those decisions and the risks that come with it? And of course, all the feedback, good and bad you get from it. But you know, I was not really the mindful entrepreneur that I think I've become. When I first got into the business in 1998, I was excited about working with people I love the idea of solving problems. I actually thought I was going to be an architect out of college. I was working at a bunch of different technologies. I realized I like people more than I like technology. So I got into the ultimate people business, which was life insurance sales. Mm. And I did that kind of, kind of by accident to a degree. I went to a job fair and I just loved the people. And I said, I want to be like these people. But I wound up learning about investment management, eventually estate planning, business succession. I wound up hooking up with a very, uh, we'll call it a, a, the team that was working with very high-end Forbes families that owned businesses. And so I got to see how business owners structured their lives differently than every regular person and how they managed the tax implication of that and their structures of investments and trusts and limited partnerships. And I, I was just blown away by that. But the challenge, as you can imagine, and you know very well from your work, is the complexity of the structure of someone's life winds up becoming the paralysis part, right? Well, Most people just question. don't know what's going on in their life. Well, said. so that was the root. That was the root of it. I, I just needed to create a, an architectural type of rendering 
that helped me understand the complexity of these peoples. All the all the kids that were involved or not involved in the business, uh, the business partners, the the obligations, the banks, the the shareholders, right? They needed to live in a space where we could look at it and say, you know what? I see the opportunity is here. It's not the obvious path in a balance sheet or an income statement. It's look at this connection between this trust that, that your parents set up. Maybe we can move these assets to this trust, avoid all this taxation, create the legacy you want, make sure your kid gets the right thing and the special needs kid gets something else. And all of a sudden people are like, wow, why didn't anybody think about that? It's like, because it wasn't transparent. And so when you mentioned in the opening about meaningful conversations, the challenge is that us as professionals, clients tend to tell us the information they know or think we need to know. And yet we know so much more about what they can do. And that was just an exciting opportunity. And of course, you know, it turns out when you solve a problem for yourself, other people have the same problem. That's why there's thousands of advisors literally around the world using asset map today, because they have the same problem. Mm -hmm. When I first met you, we were having dinner and you said, I used to just draw just like this when uh, on a whiteboard in front of my clients. Mm -hmm. And then what there must've been an aha moment where you said, Hey, there might be something more here. Uh, you obviously ditched the financial services uh, and the life insurance sales business and went full bore into the fintech space, correct? Mm -hmm. Well, gosh, no no business owner gives up the business that is profitable if they can figure out a way to stay involved in it. So mm -hmm. I still have a percentage interest in the financial planning company that still does great work today. But thankfully, I've given up the daily operational leadership. That team is 25 people, manages well over a billion dollars in assets. Uh, it still does a significant amount of insurance planning for clients. Uh, and I show up once you know a month to to say hi and and give some direction. but but for me, uh, I have been full bore into fintech. and the the critical moment was this, mark for me is I it, as you know, in the financial services business, we have been really helpful to each other in sharing best practices, right? We don't keep all the best practices to ourselves. If you're part of a community or a network like you are with legacy advisory network, we we share what works and what's communicating, and so I it was my turn to share at the top of the top of the broker dealer producers, right? I got together top fifty guys down in Florida, and it was my turn to share. What are you doing, Adam? I just said, well, I'm doing this, and I showed Asset Map, and this is how we were able to triple our revenue three years in a row. And everyone said, wait, can we use that? I, I have the same problem. I'm doing this on a yellow pad on a whiteboard. I'm trying to explain what's going on in these people's lives. It's really complicated. It's bespoke every time, so it takes an enormous amount of time to create these visualizations. Can I do this in 10 minutes with your tool? I'm like, yep, you can do this. So that's what happened. Those 20 guys said, I'll pay you a thousand bucks. I said, okay, a thousand bucks seems fair. And you know, it literally went viral from there, right? They told wow. their friends, they told their friends, they saw it, their clients saw it, said, hey, can I get it? So that was really, it wasn't intended to be the kind of business that it has become, but that was, gosh, that was in 2012. Yeah. So Talk to us today. What has Asset Map become today? You mentioned thousands of advisors. I can just speak for myself personally, mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen. And, and we're joined by Adam Holt, who's the CEO of Asset Map, uh, one of the fastest growing and most well respected pieces of financial technology in the advisory space. For those of you that are turning tuning in and you're thinking, well, where's the the, the rub? Where's the spin for business owners? It's it's right in front of all of us. It's utilizing this tool with your advisor to really visualize the opportunities and the challenges that lie before you. And I can speak firsthand as an advisor for over 35 years. It's, it's changed my life uh, to be able to communicate visually, not only with the business owners uh, themselves, the ladies and gentlemen that I work with, but their supportive spouses mm -hmm. to say, hmm, now I see what you've got going on here. I didn't know, or I feel a lot better about the goings on of your personal life or your personal and business life and trying to marry the two together. It's really changed our succession and exit planning business, uh, which is what Finish Big's all about because it provides clarity. It provides a pathway. I think it provides a tremendous amount of peace of mind for I'm thinking of my wife, Tanya, where if when we when she looks at our asset map, she goes, we're going to be OK, right? Because she can see everything that's out there. She can see the kids across the top. She can see our insurance coverage. She can see our assets, our savings, our income streams, our future income streams. And it allows us to make decisions jointly. And I think uh, that's really the magic behind asset map. But you started out at a thousand dollars subscription fee with mm -hmm. half a dozen or two dozen advisors. Where are you today? Now we're over six thousand. 
6,000 worldwide. Worldwide, yeah. Mostly in the United States because that's our core market. But yeah, you've we have a team in South Africa and UK and it's even starting in uh, UAE and Canada, South, uh, South America, Caribbean. That, those we're, we're seeing that it happens. Look, you know what's interesting about, and you picked it up, Mark. It's universal drawings, visuals, right? We're, we tend to be visual thinkers. Most of us, 65% are arguably visual first, but that doesn't mean the other 35 people are blind. It means that the other 35 <laughs> people... Point. They value auditory maybe more. And the key to this is that between the two of those, auditory and visual, you basically pick up 95% of the people that learn this way. When we as professionals or if a business owner is looking at this themselves and really needing to communicate, let's say, with their other tax professional or their business partners, have frank conversations, talk to their spouses or other people dependent upon the success of, let's say, a business owner. Because as you and I know, we we tend to deal with families a lot, and and usually one person picks up the the ball and runs with it, and the other is like, okay, I trust you to pick up the ball, mm-hmm. and I don't want to know any details. Like, don't put a balance sheet in front of the, my spouse, right? That's just not going to get her excited. Uh, she's going to say, you know, get rid of that. But it's been interesting how the asset map has been an equalizing effect. It's a it's enabling not only what you said, which is can I see transparently where things are to answer the core question we all have, which is, are we going to be okay? But the second part, which is what most people miss, it's permission to ask questions. For example, I say this, honey, I see that what's this box over here that says trust real estate warehouse million dollars. Oh, well that is, I'll tell you what that's, that's the trust I set up for the kids with Mark's help to make sure that we equalize the wealth that our daughter is going to get because she's not in the business and versus my son who's going to wind up with the business. And we did, we did, oh yeah, that's right. Oh yeah. That's the trust thingy. Yeah. That's the trust thing. Okay, great. Now we get some, so we're basically trying to make it so that it's still highly technical, but it's simple, rich. And that's the big challenge I think for today is how do we communicate with people who may have either disinterest or learned ADD attention deficit who are trying to literally be be part of the conversation, but typically wouldn't be part of because they were so intimidated by the process of finance, right? And that, how do we make it more consumable? That's a big challenge for all of us, especially as professionals, to help empower our customers. I know you guys do a great job of this because you're basically opening people's eyes to, wow, this is a lot of complexity. No wonder I'm so stressed. I don't know what the heck half of these things are doing, why I have them. Someone sold me 10 years ago, this insurance, does it even serve me anymore? Why do I have paying this through the nose? We need to have intentionality to ask the good questions to answer the dress. Why are we doing what we're doing? And are we going to be okay as a result? Yeah, I think if, you know, when I think of life without asset map for my clients, it would be disorganized, full of anxiety, lacking clarity. And I think the inability to reach common ground between spouses, right? So this has been a game changer. Again, I keep hearkening back to it, but You know, the ability to lay an asset map out in front of a a supportive spouse, man or wife, and say, this is my business life. This is everything we have accomplished Mm -hmm. together. And then go around the horn and and the ability to ask questions without being too intimidated by the subject matter. Sure. Do you realize that most of our finances are pretty much haphazard? Right. Our employer gave it to us a bunch of years ago. We keep it. We have it. We, we didn't have a question. It just, they gave it to our, our uncle told us to start an IRA. We started it. Right. Mm-hmm. These are artifacts that are left you over. Bet, you from, better buy some life insurance, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. When you had a, you bought a house or you had a kid, you, someone sold you some life insurance, you're banking. You basically just, you know, it's the most convenient bank. It's either online or it's in front of you. You don't check the rates. You don't, mm-hmm. we, we tend to just accumulate a bunch of crap in our basement or in our closet. We don't mm-hmm. inspect it because there's never a professional coming in. Like, why is this in your closet? This clearly doesn't fit you. You're never, it's not coming back into fashion. Let's rip it all out. Let's throw it on the bed. Let's decide what's going back in there. And by doing so, you actually have this kind of cathartic experience. And that's something that we think really is is critical for an advisor to do. It's no longer the day where you just run these massive reports of financial planning reports for clients. And you say, see, this is what this 900 pages says. It says you need to save more. No kidding. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> like, I need to know whether we should be moving things around to protect ourselves from predators and creditors or inabilities and disabilities, or how do I maximize my, you know, my legacy capital, right? How do we, right? I'm, I created all this wealth. Now I'm going to give it back to the government. Is there a way for me to not do that? Well, there is. Mm-hmm. Let me see what's going on. Let me see what that closet looks like. Mm-hmm. So anyway. So uh, um, a couple of things I want to explore. To date, you have been 
marketing B2B, let's say, or B2A, your business to advisors and the advisors then take mm -hmm. your great planning tool to their clients. In this case, for this show, our business owner clients. Yeah. But the next generation of asset map is almost a direct to the consumer. So you've shared that mm -hmm. with me. Can you share, share mm -hmm. what's your vision there? Well, it's a great question, and I, I would be remiss if I didn't tell you, and this might be even a release to tell you on this podcast, that we are uh, in the experimental phase of a consumer-first experience. And I think it's critical. I don't need to hide that fact. We are. You will see something in the near future that enables a consumer to, on their own, be an advocate for themselves and start building their asset map. And I think this is critical for a couple of reasons. Number one, there's been a, a history of if you wanted to get guidance or advice on your financial life or you want to just organize, you had to go to Quicken. <laughs> that was it. Or you went to an advisor. And that was pretty much it. And there wasn't a really good way to communicate that for years. And I think the the disservice that the current profession does, and it's just the, the way it is, right? Broker dealers typically run... Uh, a good amount of the tech that's out there for all financial advisors, right? It's it's edicted from the top. This is the tools yes, you have yes. to use. Major and problem, some, major problem in the industry. It's true. And the engineer built it and it's built by a, an accountant and a CFA. And okay, they're really smart. And But in, the consumer's like, what the heck does this say? I, I don't, mm -hmm. It's not empowering me. I still need a human to interpret it. Mm -hmm. And as a result, what's happened, Mark, is that the data of your own financial plan is owned by someone else someone other than who, who benefits from it. In other words, our, our, if I'm an individual consumer, my financial plan is basically tied into the organization I choose to work with. If there's any disruption to that business, my entire financial plan is basically out the window. I got to rebuild it. And so I, I really think that that's a disservice. It's kind of like medical records being stuck with my primary physician. My primary physician doesn't pick up the phone or ties, decides to retire. I guess I've got a successor. <laughs> I mean, I don't think that's fair. So we're yeah. on a big mission to democratize the data. Consumers should own their own financial plan, and then they should invite professionals to work on it with them episodically, as long as we deserve to be at the table. And that means the tax, the legal insurance investment, the business planners, and of course, our kids and our trustees, they should have episodic or momentary access to my life to help me make decisions. Or gosh forbid, on the estate side, I need my kids to know where everything's buried. So it's a treasure map. So th the real key is how do we support consumers to become, uh, we'll call them empowered about where their crap is. And number mm -hmm. two, be able to bring in an expert like yourself who could be completely across the country and say, I want the Dormans team because they know how to deal with this specific situation and boom, they can add you to their asset map. And now you have insight. It's like looking at their financial x-ray and saying, oh my gosh, I know what to do. Yeah, it's- that's it's huge. it's it's amazing. So I, I, our guest is Adam Holt, dear friend, CEO of Asset Map. Uh, for those of you that don't know Asset Map, it is uh, one of the fastest growing, most well respected fintech companies in the country, based out of Philadelphia. I want to take the next ten to twelve minutes here, Adam. Talk to me about Asset Map utilization for business owners. What have you seen to be some of the best practices? And maybe some stories that you could share with our audience of, hey, you know, it wasn't until they painted this picture, if you will, that these decisions could be explored or these opportunities could be explored and decisions be made. And, and these have been game changers. Could, do you have any examples? No, I have too many examples. You know, it's interesting. Business owners have what I call the perfect storm of problems. Their business, especially if they're an entrepreneur, their business is highly in the front of their mind, more times than not. They don't usually leave. They don't go home and leave their business at the office or wherever it is. Their personal financial life is inextricably combined with their business success and the intentionality of the, we'll call it personal benefits they put in there. You're running usually a significant amount of tax benefits through the business from uh, expense side, right? Everything from automobiles to all the things that we tend to do. There's so much tied. If there's business partners involved, there are real dependencies between other people's performance, existence, the willingness to stay on this train. Uh, and of course, our family members are really, I would say, tied, maybe not through their own choices, 
to the success of the business, not only from the exit plan of it, but also from the ongoing cash flow that tends to make more sense to push right back into business because it's a better investment, let's say, than the S&P. And I know a lot of a lot of business owners that will make that argument all day long sure. that their their ROI is better, and maybe on a tax adjusted better their basis. They're completely right. That being said, the concentration risk that becomes obvious uh, has more than just investment allocation implication. In other words, this has always been this argument that well, if you look at your portfolio, ninety percent of your net worth is in your business. That's concentration risk, right? Mm -hmm. We both know that from a risk or asset allocation standpoint. That's like that's like driving 100 miles an hour down a 55 mile an hour road. Like there's a little bit of risk there, especially if you got kids in the backseat. So what do we tend to do? Is we tend what becomes obvious when you look at it visually is you tend to see that dependency, and it allows you in an open forum to say, is that really our intention here? Is our intention really to drive 100 miles an hour because our car can handle it, but our passengers really won't be able to handle it? And to recognize that it's more than just about us. Here's here's a good example. We had, um, there was a, a very simple situation where someone had an enormous amount of net worth tied up in their uh, in their business. They actually did have a pretty good exit, but the entire time with the two kids at home and their spouse, uh, she was fundamentally asking him to, to get insurances. Actually, it was life insurance. And he was like, yeah, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. I'll get a million dollars of life insurance. Now the business is worth 20 million bucks. Kids are young, wife's not working. And she's basically supporting his crazy lifestyle, traveling around the world to support this, right? So highly, highly valuable person, key person in the, in the business of raising a family. Uh, his wife is asking him and saying to him, we did an asset map because he was a buddy of mine. Actually, I think you might know him and I won't say who it was, but we had lunch and I did, I did him this service. I said, listen, I, I want to show you something and I'll just pretend that you're him. Mm -hmm. I said, Mark, let me, I want to do something for you because I think you need this. Let me show you my asset map. And I showed him my asset map. I had printed it out and brought it out to the, the table. And, I, and he's like, wow, look at all this stuff and all this complicated. I said, this is why I did this. And I showed him for each box there that represented a brokerage account and a 401k and a qualified plan and a deferred comp plan. And I explained, he's like, wow, I never even thought about this. I said, well, that's, that's because I'm in the business and you're not. Right. And I just know a lot of stuff, but here's the thing that I did for you. And I made an asset map of him. Now I don't know much about him. So I know he has a company and I know he has a house and I know he has a spouse and he has no kids. And I said, I have a bet that you have nothing in this category or you don't have the right stuff. And that was his insurances. And mm -hmm. I put a big circle around it. I said, I want you to take this home, give this to your spouse, fill out the rest of it, bring it back to me. He did. And I said, this is, we, everybody, you couldn't avoid the problem. He specifically didn't have any just cheap term insurance to protect mm. the income and the earnings he was going to make. That $20 million mm -hmm. exit that he was going to have was completely unsecured. And no bank would let you get away with that. No investor would let you get away with it. But our families do it all the time. You know why? Because they don't know. They don't mm. know what questions to ask. Mm. So the irony behind and they just is, And they just yeah. assume. They just assume that you've addressed they assume it. Right? You've done it, right? You care about it. You right? built you this great business. You obviously have these, you know, you've checked these easy boxes. Smarty right? pants, right? I agree. Right. Yeah, You've obviously yeah. done it. I can tell you a hundred stories of some of the smartest people in the business, presidents of major public companies that I have done their asset map. And I'm like, wow, people are taking advantage of you. Mm. But I'm, he's, they're too busy to look at it. So sometimes you need a catalyst. To yeah, just I, I found in yourself. our practice, I find in our practice at Legacy mm -hmm. Business Advisors uh, that, you know, the most impactful meetings we have day in and day out are is with the, the non-working spouse. And I don't mm. mean that they're not working, working in... They have a different career, but if I have a business owner, let's just say it's a gentleman and I, and I'm, if I, said, I want you to bring your wife and we throw their asset map up there and we have their business and we have their income and their lifestyle and maybe a, a property in Florida and we've got two or three kids and et cetera, et cetera. And as soon as I said, well, what, what plans do you have here for succession, continuity, estate plan? But, and she goes, well, you know, John, what is the plan? And the heat gets turned up and that's the catalyst, right? That's the motivation. And uh, you and I are both tall guys and, you know, mm -hmm. they'll, she'll look at me and say, don't you let him off the hook here, big guy, because I've been after him for years. And now that I see everything that's involved, uh, I'm even more uh, passionate about getting it fixed. So mm -hmm. we're going to address this, right? That's true. Um, and it, it just is a remarkable, remarkable discussion where do you see the future of asset map? You've got to get this B to C. Do you see that being maybe distributed 
uh, vis-a-vis, obviously, maybe the internet? Is it going to be through 401k plan providers? Is it mm. going to be provided to business owners to pass out to their employees? And I would also like to get your input on this because we see this in parts of our business uh, and we see it throughout all of our business owner clients. It's the lack of engagement at the employee level. Do you think mm-hmm. Asset Map helps to mitigate that? I, I think that for some of me, yeah. and I'm, I'll be, I'm 58, but the lack of engagement is almost due, I think, in large part to intimidation, right? The employees just get so overwhelmed when they start talking about savings and investments and things like that. And, and, and all of a sudden, it's just like paralysis. They can't do anything. Your thoughts? Yeah. You know, look, you made me think of something. The answer to your prior question is yes, all the above. We're, we're the, the consumer experience we think needs to be distributed from players with trust, mm-hmm. right? So employers and retirement plan providers are likely to be the purveyors of the consumer experience. Ironically, right now in G2, which is the public Yelp of technology, if you will, Yelp, the rating company. Mm-hmm. And Asimab right now is the number one financial wellness tool, even though it's an advisor-based tool. It's got the highest rating for financial wellness. Why? Because people just want to know where their stuff is. A financial x-ray is something we can all kind of get behind, like an inventory. Like where where is it? Visually. But I mean, Not it's interesting, price. right? More so a picture than a balance sheet, right? Totally. I mean, right. a picture, but but the challenge with the balance sheet, it only deals with what? Assets and liabilities. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the most valuable financial instrument we have is income. So does mm-hmm. that mean you need an income statement? And sometimes the most the most critical security blanket we have is insurance. So that means you need a policy statement. And what what asset map is? It's a it's a income balance sheet, income statement, balance sheet, policy summary, family tree mashup. That's what it is. Mm-hmm. All the people and things that matter. That's why it's called asset map. The relationship mm-hmm. between those five things. And I think I think the key for for us is you hit it on the head. We think that every consumer on the planet. And Asimab was designed to be agnostic to jurisdiction and tax and language and currency. We're in 96 different currencies right now. So hmm. I, the, the reality is, is that people can do this in 15 minutes and they have a map of where their financial yeah. junk is. People's, people, all over the world, people's relationship with money it's the is same. the same. It's the same. It's the same. Culturally, Whether it's, it's the same. Pounds sterling or rubles or pesos, it's... Yeah, it's true. And and different languages too. And I, I, but I think you're right. It's, can you start with the reason why a lot of financial planning has failed at the employer level in a wellness solution is because not only is it intimidating, but it's tended to start with the financial vernacular, which is let's talk about your goals and let's talk about retirement distribution. And you're like, oh my gosh, that's a really complicated thing. Yeah, I'll get to it. It's like a complicated project. You don't start it right away. But if I just said, hey, let's just get your inventory straight, no judgment. Not about whether you have it or you don't have it. I can tell you what your peers have and and you can tell me, yeah, well, you have that and you forget. And let's just start with knowing what's in your backpack. Okay. Yeah. Let's not talk yeah. about like doing a trip around the world. Let's just, what's in your backpack? Yeah. And then yeah. from there, we can give you feedback, red light, green light. You know, these are probably some areas you want to focus on. And I think it's a journey. And 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 that's that's the key is to not make it so complex that people just don't start. Yeah. If you were to speak to our business owners, let's say you're in a group mm-hmm. of, uh, we're having dinner uh, here in Northeast Ohio, I fly in. What would be the the, the, the the number one piece of advice relative to asset map and business mm. planning for business owners today? That's a good question. I'm available Thursday if you want to fly me up. Um, <laughs> where are we going? Um, actually, I'm not available Thursday, but I'd love to spend some time with you. And business owners, because we all share good ideas. The idea that I would share at that table would be, let's get over the fact that we are not always the smartest person in the room. Business owners, I know I'm one, we tend to have an answer and an opinion about everything. Mm -hmm. But we are often ignorant about things that we don't focus on every day. And that's why we tend to value professional help, consultation, et cetera, et cetera. Recognize that in our own personal life, whether you have a coach or whether you have a therapist or whether you have a a bossy spouse, I don't know, someone who's giving you feedback of how you could be better. And I think the first key for creating an asset map is just laying it all on the table, saying, hey, can I get the right eyes on this map? Who do I trust? Who's bringing some experience and who's worked with my peers before? I know you've done a lot of this work for people, certainly in exit planning and legacy planning. And what do I not know? 
right. that you know, that you see, that I can't see through the mess. And that's the moment when you get real insight and value. And you're like, wow, I didn't, I actually, it's funny because I have to make this presentation. Someone said, what do the mega wealthy people do? I'm like, well, oh, you mean like Gates and Buffett? What are they? I know exactly what they're doing because I've researched it. How do they manage a state so they pay zero taxes? Do you want to know that? I happen to know that. But I can't start that conversation until I know what you've done so far or what you matter, what care, like what you care about. And so the key is you have so much knowledge with business owners, they should just start the conversation. The first way to do it is just tell me what you're doing right now. Just you know, let's have a frank conversation. I'll write it down on the screen. We'll throw it, we'll throw it up on the board. And let's figure out what we're doing. If there's anything we can add value to. And if we can, great. If we can't, then you got some feedback and you got a second opinion. But that's going to be the key is, is to just get over on egos. Yeah, I think that uh, I would add to that. And that's just great feedback uh, is Asset Map gives us, me as a professional, the ability to ask questions. It gives, uh, it allows other advisors, the accountants, the attorneys, the bankers that we work with in the succession and exit planning space clarity and understanding of all the goings on, not just what's in their lane, but the broader picture. And to the non-working spouses, peace of mind and comfort that things are being worked on and addressed. And we're not going to fix them all in one meeting. There's no question about it, as you know, but it's a process and we're just going to chip away at it. I can't thank you enough, Adam. You've become a really good friend of mine. I have the utmost respect for you. I know you're a very, very busy guy. Uh, how do people reach you, Adam Holt, at Asset Map? Well, thank you, Mark. And I, I my, the sentiments are the same. So thank you very much for being such a huge supporter of what we're doing and, and a visionary to do it early when people didn't know about it. The best way to connect with me is clearly through uh, assetmap.com. You can always Google it. I'm sure you'll find it at this point. And LinkedIn is my most effective communication. Mm -hmm. So if you want to just follow me on LinkedIn or, or reach out and direct message me, that's the best way to, to communicate and if there's reason to continue the conversation, we look forward to it. We're putting on an enormous amount of content these days, Mark, on how to help people make better Fantastic. financial decisions. Yeah. I mean, you've got you've got absolutely a heart of gold. I uh, had the opportunity to, to meet your mom. You did. She's one of your primary uh, initial investors and true believers. You've got the, how large is your team today? Forty people now for 40 Asset people. Map. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And uh, you had a great uh, sports season in Philadelphia. So uh, I, I will take no uh, credit. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully, when did I guess today has been Adam Holt, CEO of Asset Map, a Philadelphia based fintech company, number one financial wellness tool, one of the top financial planning tools for advisors. Probably the biggest impact for you business owners that are listening find an advisor that works with asset map it will change the way you relate with money it will change the way you relate with your business your fellow stakeholders it will or help you organize your life and provide terrific peace of mind i'm your host mark dorman here's to finishing big and we look forward to speaking with you on our next episode thank you very much we hope you enjoyed listening to finish big the podcast with mark dorman from legacy business advisors Click the follow button to be notified when new episodes are available. Learn more at LegacyBusinessAdvisors.com or call 330-350-5410. Please be aware the information in these podcasts represent the views and opinions of our guests and do not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Legacy Business Advisors. The content is for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional tax or legal advice. Always seek the advice of your legal or tax professional with any questions regarding your specific situation.